Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of CU training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please check out my website at www.fox1corp.com for all the gliding products that I can supply. The link is posted in the comments below. Please subscribe to this Fox One Corp YouTube channel, and if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. In today's video, I want to show you how to adjust some of the options within CU. We'll take a look at units and UTC offset, how to change the glider symbol, the vector map appearance, and the airspace appearance. To make any of these changes, we access them through the Tools menu. So we'll click on Tools, and then we'll click on Options. That opens the Options dialog where we can make any of these changes. So the first place I want to start is under this General heading. So here we can change our units, and I'm going to leave the distance at the IGC standard of kilometers and the speed at kilometers per hour. Altitude, I'll put to the North American standard of feet. Vertical speed, knots. And wind speed, I'm also going to put that in knots. UTC offset, I'm going to put in minus 4 for Eastern Daylight Time. And we can also adjust that time with the arrows. We can down arrow and we can up arrow to move that UTC offset instead of typing. The next section I want to take a look at is flight. In flight, really what I want to see is I want to take a look at this glider symbol and how we can change that. So there are a few options and we change it by clicking on the symbol. What I'm talking about is changing this symbol that we see on the root. So if I come back here and I click on the symbol, we can see we go from a glider symbol to a delta, so a hang glider type symbol. We can click again, get a skinnier glider, click again, and we get what I use as a preferred symbol, and that is a post with a flag on top that contains the contest ID of the glider. With this symbol, what we get is the length of the post is representative of the altitude. So if you're running maggot races and you have five or ten gliders, you can see who's higher and who's lower, just by the length of the post as you're running that race. We'll click on this again. We can get a jet icon. And we'll just go back through again until we get to my preference, which is our flag with the contest ID. Another thing of interest on this menu is this selection box here. Automatically adjust altitude to QNH or QFE. So that will change the altitude readout that we see down in the parameters based on altimeter settings or field elevation. The next thing we want to take a look at is the map appearance. So map appearance, we can go in here and this heading doesn't give us too much information, but what we really want to do is we want to dive into this subheading vector maps. And this is where we can change really the, the look of the maps. So the first thing we can see is right now the scheme that it's set to is mountain landscape. And so if we click on this and we change it to low landscape and we say OK, we can see that the color scheme has changed and the mountains are a little bit more pronounced. We can get back into changing those by going to tools again. And instead of going all the way down to options, we can more quickly get to it just by clicking on this vector maps. And that gives us the same information. And what's interesting here is we can see that when I select low landscape, I can see the brown color starts to change at 3200 feet. If I select this and go back to mountain landscape, we can see the brown has changed higher up to about 4900 feet. So those are a couple of options. Some other ones, if we go down, we can look at open street maps. Say OK for that. And that makes a much lighter, more Google-like map that you would see on the internet. Sometimes a lighter color is good for seeing some of the layers, like the airspace layer that we had trouble seeing on the colored maps. I don't particularly like this open map. It doesn't give me enough contrast. Let's go back to Tools, Vector Maps. And there's one other, and this last one's called Teal. And this is the one I actually use. I prefer it for where I fly. It gives a nice coloring, gives the roads and the towns in red and yellow, and it gives some terrain offset using various shades of green. So this is the one I prefer. Of course, the red airspace shows up nicely on this, but any of the green airspace zones don't show up particularly well on this teal color. 
So that's something else we want to take a look at is how do we change the airspace preferences. So one other thing with airspace is when I move the cursor around the screen, so up here I can see this corner of green airspace and I want to know what that is. Well, I can go here and just simply click once and it brings up some information such as the name. That's called Sector 1 and it's a Class D that goes from 9,500 feet to flight level 180. And if I hover over it, I can see that the whole sector is shaded with this yellowish green color so I can see the extent of that sector. So in terms of changing the basic color, I can go to Tools, Options, and I can go down here to Airspace. And in that last look, we saw that was a Class D. So I can go here and I can select Class D. And what we see is Class D is set to green and we have an inbound offset style. And so what options do we have? We can have an outline only, which is just a line. We can completely fill the zone with a solid color. And if I select OK here, we should see that updates. And that's all the class D. So our one sector is right here, but those other green shapes are also class Ds. So that kind of obliterates everything in the background of the map. So the solid fill is not ideal for what we want to do. So again, we'll go back to tools and there's a shortcut instead of going options in airspace, we can just go straight to airspace right here. And again, we can select our class D and instead of having a solid fill, we can do, for example, a transparent fill. And we can say OK here and we get a lighter color so we can still see some background. Still not ideal for some places. And so we'll go back to airspace here and go back to our class D. I personally like to use this inbound offset and what it does is it gives us a solid line and then it gives us a slight shading inside the region. The problem we have is the green color. So I'm going to take this green color and I'm going to change it. Um, so for example, let's use this uh, cyan type color here. And we'll say OK. Now we can see our class D nicely outlined in that pinkish color. Um, it conflicts a little bit with the red, so maybe that wasn't the best choice for us. So we'll go back, airspace, select our class D. And instead of that, which I guess was actually a magenta color as opposed to a cyan color, and we'll go pick up, uh, let's see, Let's use a blue color here and say OK. So there's our class D nicely outlined in blue and our class uh, A outlined in red. One other thing that I wanted to show you under the airspace window is that when you download CU, you can get all of the CU airspace files that can be loaded. And what I find is that these are huge files that cover the entire continent of North America or Europe and I don't use them. I use the file just for the one site where I'm going to be flying. And so if you don't want those and you don't want to be warned about them, you can see down here at the bottom at startup prompt to install updated airspace. So you can change that and you can do up, update airspace automatically if you want to use the, the standard CU files or my preference, I select this don't check for updates. And now it'll never give me a little message down in the corner saying there are new airspace database to update. And so you can change that anytime by going back to here and you can manually check for updates by clicking on this one. So thanks for watching uh, the CU training video. I hope you learned something new about CU. Please subscribe to this Fox One Corp uh, YouTube channel to see more CU videos and visit me on the web at www.foxonecorp.com.